Hey folks, Captain Matt here. Summer is behind us now. We're going into the cooler season. Very excited about getting breeding going with all the compost that we want to see the worms turn into a worm castings. We have the worms to do it for now, but the more worms, the better. There's something about breeding worms that's just very exciting. And uh, at this time of the year, I generally will breed. And so uh, right now you can see right here, we have 18 breeder uh, bins going. Each, we have each row. This top row is, was done one week, a week later, we did the next row and a week later, the next row. And the way we're set up here, by the time I uh, set this one up, the following week, three weeks have gone by and we're ready to separate the worms from the cocoons. So I, I'm going to stay with the 18 breeder bins, but we will also start using all the other bins for growing out all the worms. And so we'll show you that as it goes along. But today we're gonna just look at stage one, what, how, what we do when we're getting ready to breed red wigglers. Worm castings are the best fertilizer on the planet and can revitalize soils that have been ravaged by chemical fertilizers. Captain Matt is not your average worm farmer. This year, he'll produce 10 tons of worm castings in his garage to sell in his local community. Matt wants to mentor you to help you achieve your worm goals. He doesn't throw big words or complicated information at you. He's a farmer with dirt under his fingernails. He'll teach you proven approaches that work. Subscribe now and then head over to wormpeople.com to jumpstart your worm farming journey. We're gonna do it right here in a bin. And the first thing you wanna know is when I'm breeding, how many worms do I put in uh, a breeder bin? And the basic rule is this, per square foot of area, not volume, just top area, per square foot, you're gonna to wanna to put approximately 200 red wigglers per square foot. So we measured this out and I'll just kind of just do it in front of you. We've got a two foot fit here and here we have a foot and a half. And so what, we'll, what we have as a result of that is we have two and a half square feet. So we're going to put 500 red wigglers in here and you know, folks sometimes say, well, you got to get all mature ones and this and that. I don't take the time to check and make sure everyone's clitellum is mature. And the reason is the majority of them have been in a bulk bin. The majority of them are mature. There are some that aren't mature, but I know something. I'll be breeding most of the, most of the fall and winter here. And the worms that I'm using, some of them may be immature, but they will become mature after three, uh, maybe four or five weeks at the very most. So I don't mind just by weight getting my worms. And so, you know, I, I weigh them out and then I put them in and whatever. And again, I'm taking them by bulk. I mean, I'm literally taking handfuls out of the bulk bin and, uh, and then weighing them and uh, putting them in here. So the first thing that we do is this, is we get, we, we'll get some uh, compost. And the compost, the bedding that we use, the compost that we're using is leaf and wood chip compost. It's broken down extremely well. Uh, I did not sift it, and you may want to sift it. So I'm not gonna be able to go in and accurately get a good count on how many cocoons I have. We're gonna write all this out in a course in the near future, but we wanted to give you a picture of it now because some of you have been really hot on getting this going. And we'll talk about sifting later, but I choose not to sift. So let's dump that right in. Uh, Jude, what we have here is two and a half gallons, and um, I have used three to four gallons in the past, but all, but I've backed it down to two and a half gallons simply because of the weight. It really, you know, when, when I'm dealing with all these bins at my age, it was really too much for me to be lifting them around, and I kept realizing, hey, I, this may be an accident waiting to happen. So I decided instead of getting to that point, I would lower it and I've worked it out where we have the two and a half gallons and I have plenty of depth with the two and a half gallon here. Um, we're seeing in tray, in the first trays I did three weeks ago, um, I 
did some sneak peeking and we are already loaded with cocoons. So I'm not shooting for the most cocoons I possibly can. I know how to do that, but I'm shooting for getting lots of cocoons and doing it in a way and in a manner that is not gonna hurt me. So that's the first thing. We have some good moisture in the, um, in the compost already, and so, which is good, but I'm gonna add some things. And the first thing I'm gonna add is some stone dust, okay? It never hurts. It just, and, and it's just a, a cup about this size. You don't have to get too fussy about, oh, how big was that cup? Just put some stone dust in there. The, it, the worms need grit for digestion, and it's just a good idea. Out in the wild, worms have lots of stone dust all over in all the soils that they're in, or if they're down in sandy areas, they have plenty of grit. So don't be worried about putting too much in. The next thing I'm gonna do for the two and a half gallons, I'm gonna put a quarter of a cup of agricultural domalite lime. And it's very important that you get agricultural lime. It doesn't have to be domalite, uh, although I just happen to use domalite, but um, you may wanna make sure it's agricultural lime because there's a lime that would literally kill all your worms and it's used for something else and they're both called lime. But you want agricultural lime. This is the kind of lime that uh, people spread on their lawns if their lawns are too acidic. And, the, and that is the reason for doing this. We put the lime in because the, um, the leaf compost and, and wood compost here, wood chip compost, has a tendency to be on the a high side of acidity. And so uh, just to, you know, just to cover a base, I put lime in just so we're not dealing with that problem, with the problem there. So the next thing I'll do is just mix it all up, get it all mixed in here, get a few solid pieces, just break them up and we'll get a good mix going. Now, the next thing we're gonna do right now, we are probably at, and I, I would say, 80%, 70 or 80% moisture right now. But when you're breeding, you want maximum moisture. The most you can have without uh, standing water in your bin. So what we're going to do here is we're going to over, we have a little spider in there. That's, he's fine, he's fine. But we're going to overwater this. We're going to put so much water in here that we have to, we're gonna, we have to take some out. Uh, first of all, it was already at 80%. With this can I'm putting in, we're probably taking it to a place where we will end up with standing water. And that's what you want. You want to put, you want to over, you can see, if you come close, you can see, I mean, we have puddles in here. All right, so I'm actually going to put a little more in because as I was mixing it, um, it just, I want it to be really, really full of moisture. And so we'll mix this up really good. Now, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this kind of moisture. Puddles at the bottom of this. Mix it real well, because especially you may be using a number of, we could use different kinds of bedding. You might be using uh, peat moss. And peat moss, just remember if you're using that, uh, peat moss absorbs a lot more moisture uh, when you turn your back. So you're gonna, you want to make sure you have loads in there and mix it well. I don't advise that you use uh, coco core for, uh, for breeding. Um, I've just heard from a number of people that it's questionable for, and I don't exactly know the whys of it, but um, uh, peat moss and uh, leaf compost are two really, really great um, beddings for uh, doing your breeding. All right, so we've mixed it. Now, I, I mean, here's, here's the moisture that we have. You'll see, look at that. That's just dripping with water. So we are way over 100% moisture, but we can't leave it that way because if we leave it that way, we're gonna be in trouble. But I want the highest moisture that I can have without having standing water. So what I do, I do six bins at a time when I do them. And now I'll take this bin and I'm going to put it right on the floor over here, Jude. We'll put a board out here. Love and I, yep. And we'll put one end, turn it the long way, right? One end right up on the bin. Like that. Yep. 
Definitely drop that in. And so what we're creating is we're creating a flow here so that all the excess moisture uh, flows downhill. And what I'll do is just I'll pull, pull the, um, the bedding back a bit. And as you can see, we're puddling up right here. And I'll leave that now for a good 24 hours. And what's going to happen, that water is all overnight is going to drain into the front. And I'll take a sponge and take the moisture out. And then I, 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 I won't even say 24 hours. Leave it overnight and that will be good enough. Leave it, you know, good. give it a good 10 hours or so. Then take your water out twice. The first time, take your water out with a sponge. I just put a sponge in, the sponge sucks up the moisture, put it in a container, and get, I get it to the point that there's no more liquid right in this area. And then I'll come back about an hour later and get anything else that drains down. What that does is that gives us, now it gives us a, the highest potency of moisture that we possibly can have without it having puddles. That's what you're looking for because in breeding, you want that moist, 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 uh, bedding and that will really really aid if you have good moisture good temperature and good food You're gonna see lots of breeding going on and um, See lots of cocoons come from it. So folks, we're gonna stop here for tonight We're gonna take this bin and we're gonna put the worms in I'll show you how I put the worms in date it and then we put it aside and then uh, what we do how we deal with the food for it and how long it is before we separate the bedding and cocoons from the worms. Don't forget folks, Learn to Worm course. And, uh, we just wanna thank you folks that have taken it and uh, wanna encourage some of you to take that course and get refreshed in a whole bunch of areas too. And that is found at wormpeople.com. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Subscribe now and then head over to wormpeople.com to jumpstart your worm farming journey.